Hey, hello! This is Paul, Inventor 3, and you're watching Science News Bits! Uh, today's topic, let's see, uh, Hindu Hooverboard. An update on this, and that's right, this is the world's first real Hooverboard. Just like in the movie, Back to the Future. Uh, they are on Kickstarter.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Their goal was $250. $50,000, and they are now over $378,000 and still have like a month to go. So they're doing great. Uh, let's see, they also have <coughs> a white box developer kit. The actual boards, as far as I know, are not available yet. They're still developing them, but they do have the white box developer kits. A white box that levitates over a special board they have. Uh, these developer kits start at approximately $300 and go up to approximately $900. Plus, if you want, you could pay an additional $50 for some skins to make your box look really stylized. So, the big question is how does this Hoover board work? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. I was thinking uh, through coils, electromagnetic repulsion, uh, and also Wired Magazine uh, wrote up an article, and I'll put a link in the description down there too, about how they think it works. And basically, we're both talking about the same thing. We're both thinking coils, electromagnetic repulsion, uh, but then the question is, how do they keep them cool? Are there superconductors? What type of materials? Liquid nitrogen? Uh, but thanks to a good friend out there, Edwin. Hey, Edwin. Uh, he sent me a link on a Hoover Board's patent. <laughs> so after a little bit of reading and studying, and uh, after making it partway through their diagrams, I saw some illustrations that looked extremely familiar. So, on the bottom of this board, they have four circular shapes. They're not coils. What they are is a pattern of specially orientated magnets going around in a circle, in a ring, and then inside another smaller ring of magnets, a smaller ring of magnets. So many rings of magnets specially orientated. They're Halbach arrays. So thanks to Hellbach Arrays and Lens Law, this is how I believe this works. <coughs> uh, anybody who's not familiar with Hellbach Arrays and how that works, I'll put a link in the description down there for that also. So this is a very interesting device. I think uh, it's got a lot of possibilities. So next thing. Lowell's. Have you all heard of Lowell's uh, hardware stores? Lowe's robots are coming. They're testing the robots to see if they can improve customer service. So they're starting out with four robots are being tested at Orchard Supply Hardware Store, which is owned by Lowe's. <coughs> and they refer to these robots as OSH bots. What that stands for, I'm not sure. OSHA? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. Maybe you know. So anyhow, they look like two columns, two large screens, and you would type into one screen from a list of objects they have in their store items, and you'd pick from that item, and the bot will lead you to that item. Pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool. We'll see what happens with that, though. What happens when Grandma drops a bottle of olive oil in aisle three? We'll find out, won't we? So, we'll see about that. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, number three. Did you know Henry Ford made an automobile made of hemp? And it was powered by hemp? He had hemp fields 
<laughs> Who would have thunk? The panels on the car were nearly indestructible. Panels these days are not cheap to replace. Well, I think it's about high time we brought this technology back, don't you? Anyhow, see you again real soon on Science News Bits.